March was a pretty rough time for Guild Wars 2. Uh, we were reeling from the lack of content in Heart of Thorns. It was the lowest earnings quarter Guild Wars 2 had ever experienced. There was no living world on the horizon. There had been a couple of high profile departures and finally came some really bad news that the legendary weapons Heart of Thorns was advertised for including were being cancelled. Now, despite an obvious attempt from the devs to soften the blow with the announced return of the Super Adventure Box, this really pissed people off. And, if internet comments actually have any weight to them, it actually saw a lot of people outright quit the game over this. Why? Well, a lot of people thought legendary weapons were really important. They claimed to have bought Heart of Thorns purely for them. Or maybe, for a lot of us, it was just one disappointment too many. I was among those upset. At the time, I made a 25 minute long discussion, well, rant video on the topic, but rather than being upset over some principled thing like false advertising, or because I really saw myself making a lot of Heart of Thorns legendaries or bought the expansion for them, which I didn't, I was upset over something else. Heart of Thorns had delivered so little in the areas I really cared about, and the company seemed to be completely incapable of making enough content to keep the audience satisfied. Not only was Heart of Thorns short, not only was the living world not coming, but they couldn't even deliver on this thing! That we'd had so many dev quotes that was apparently a sound, solid system that had been talked about since a blog post way back in 2013. What really added fuel to the fire, for me, was ArenaNet's seeming insistence that they had made a satisfactory amount of stuff and what they had delivered was okay. It seemed to suggest that nothing would really change in the future. I said at the time that if this is really what all the expansions would be like, I wouldn't be interested in the franchise anymore, not on the long term. And a shitload of people agreed with me. That is a comment I still stand by. Now, to be fair, I can sort of understand ArenaNet's perspective at the time. Really, pound for pound, even Heart of Thorns had added a lot of content. It's just that I don't think the developers have ever really had a good grasp on just how exhaustible, skippable and outright unknown most of their stuff ends up being. Things like the temporary nature of dynamic events, waypointing and their general everything as quick and painless as possible philosophy may all be great things, okay, that have built Guild Wars to an audience, but they come at a cost. And that cost is that people whiz through content in this game way quicker than they would, say, in any other MMOs. The devs may have felt like they really did make a lot, but the playtime their users get out of their content is often much smaller than the playtime that same content would buy another MMO or video game developer. So Guild Wars 2 has to work hard. Heart of Thorns had to work hard, and people naturally didn't take kindly to the idea that Heart of Thorns was enough when it didn't seem to. That video I made got a lot of attention. There's a link on the screen if you want to watch it, but it was the perfect place, basically, for anyone who was feeling disenfranchised to have a good bitch, whine, and moan. And ArenaNet got a lot of bad press during that time. Now, I know for a fact that because it's not laced with drama, today's video will never get as much attention as my other one. But I feel it's only fair we return to this topic and proper credit is given where it's due because the legendary weapons are back. Holy shit! Yeah, that's right! They're back! As of this patch, uh, four months after the news of their <clears throat> cancellation, we've seen a new legendary enter the game. It's the mace. As a mace, it has better coverage than the previous one, the short bow, being usable by three classes this time, and it actually fills a niche many of us have been looking for for a long time. A legendary mace that isn't a fun and silly stupid thing, but it's actually totally badass. It even wins because it's got a fiery theme and a lot of people using maces at the moment, uh, possibly on Condi builds. So this is great news, and it might beg the question, how did this happen? What's been going on? Well, see, technically, technically, the developers never really cancelled the weapons. They just suspended them indefinitely. This is an area of discussion I never saw fit to go into four months ago because I, like many others, simply saw it as a fluffy and corporate way of breaking the news. If you suspend them indefinitely, then it's not technically false advertising, right? But who are they kidding? Everyone who ever says suspended indefinitely really means it's over. If they didn't have the time to make the weapons in March, how the hell were they going to magically find the time when they ended up in expansion crunch or living world crunch? A few brave souls at the time dared to defend ArenaNet by pointing out this comment, this terminology and say, oh, they might come back. But those small voices in the corner were quickly drowned out in the wave of negativity. People like me were far too cynical to hear otherwise. And that was that. 
But as it turns out, those little voices were right. Pat yourselves on the back, guys. It really was just an indefinite suspension. Mike wasn't lying or buttering anything up, despite all the negativity you got thrown at him, and he deserves some credit for that. In a blog post with last week's patch, we were told this, that even after suspending work on them, the discussion about legendary weapons never stopped on our side. Some players viewed suspended indefinitely as code words for cancelled, but for us, it was more of a time out while we worked to find a different solution. We wanted to find a way to deliver legendaries without hurting content development to do it, and that led us to this new method of obtaining legendary weapons going forwards. Uh, their philosophy now is, to quote them again, that legendary weapons should never be hampered by design implementation time. Of course, our art team puts a lot of effort and creativity into each new weapon, but having created the art, we should be able to put it into the game in a matter of days. And so, amazingly, they're actually back. But there have been some changes. This is not all perfect. This isn't, oh, they've magically figured out how to do everything they were doing before and everything that they're doing right now and it's all hunky-dory somehow. They did have to change, as they've alluded to here, the system a little, and I'll explain to you guys what that is and what it really means. So, for those a little bit out of the loop, maybe, the original four legendaries that the team added with Heart of Thorns, especially the fourth one, Shukran Champawat, the short bow, they came with really rich, deep collections and kind of pseudo-quests and adventures. Shukran Champawat has you hunting down tigers all over the place and going to dens and so forth. They were still gold and time sinks, yes, getting one was still a big measure of dedication to the game, but they had a lot of fun and flavour in them too. What ArenaNet are saying today, basically, is that all that extra fluffy stuff I just mentioned, they're saying it's not worth the development time. And so the legendary weapons are back, but all of that extra stuff isn't coming with them. That's the compromise. They say, let's be straight that the new system lacks a lot of the story and lore of the old legendary journeys, but legendary journeys didn't need to be that complicated. Now that might upset some of you guys. My personal opinion is that the story and lore you got from them was always way too thin on the ground anyway. If they're still trying to compete with the idea of traditional quests and things using this system, I still think they didn't do that well. But it's going to be sad news because really it did offer some value. But really looking at it from a wider perspective, I think I'm more in ArenaNet's camp than anywhere else at the moment. Legendary weapons, to me, are very important parts of the game, yes, but they're important not because of providing lore and things, they're important as long-term goals that keep people playing. They're important as something to get wide-eyed about when you're a new player and you just come in and to get excited about with new updates. And they're important as something to show off dedication, right? MMOs thrive on that kind of long-term project you can go for. It's very important in Guild Wars 2, especially where the idea of gear treadmills and stuff are non-existence. All of those criteria I just mentioned, they can be filled without having these enormously complicated collections attached to them. And there's another angle too. Realistically speaking, very few players actually go for a legendary. I know many of us watching this video and who actively play the game for years on end will obviously go for legendaries, but your average casual player doesn't really. And let alone that, going for a legendary journey in the first place, even fewer will go for that specific journey which unlocks that specific content of, say, hunting tigers across the world. So what the developers are doing with the old system is they were making rich content and cool stuff that only a fraction of a fraction of us are going to see. Or well, think of it this way, they're adding really cool content to the game and then they're asking you to pay 300 to 500 gold a pop to experience it because it's supposed to be behind these massive time sink and gold sinks. So that really doesn't work too well. You remember when they originally suspended the, the legendary weapons and we thought they were gone for good, that team that was doing all of those big long quests, they set out instead to work on current events. What they made was the same quality of content and the same level of content, but now it was things that everyone got to experience and everyone saw the benefits from. That team who made the tiger quests were now doing stuff like giving us giant anomalies that we could hunt across Corteria maps, the sad visions that keep appearing to us, bloodstone crazed monsters, the radar quests, and all sorts more that everyone gets behind and everyone enjoys patch after patch after patch. There's no more gold sinks hidden behind this stuff and it doesn't require you to have to want some end objective like an item that you might not even like the look of to be able to see the content. Isn't that realistically a better world to be living in? 
So, their new system is trying to give us the best of both worlds. The current events and stuff will continue, but now we also get the legendaries too. The legendaries are just as difficult to acquire as the others, even though they're much more basic to get in terms of the number of things you have to do. They're still difficult, there's still massive golden time sinks, which is what legendaries really are supposed to be. Uh, and you can still make, very importantly, a little bit of progress on them each day, instead of having to roll in the forge for a precursor like we had to at launch. So that is still solved, but that's about it. Their new system is a very simple and blunt process. It ties into the new maps that they have, and you just work on your currencies through that. I really think that that's the compromise that had to happen though. We now get the legendaries, we get all the good stuff, we get to see these new things for our classes, they're not false advertising with Heart of Thorns, and all the cool content stuff is available for everyone regardless of whether you want the legendary that's associated with it. And I've gotta say, I'm happy with this. I'm very happy with this. I have to hold my hat in my hand. I was overly cynical way back in March. I think it's only fair that I point that out. Uh, honestly, looking back at this whole thing, even if we are satisfied today, and I fully appreciate some people still might not be, but looking back at this whole thing, the legendary precursor scavenger hunt stuff has been a total fiasco. There were several quotes from the developers just this year talking about how long they'd worked on the system, how modular it was, how fast they'd be able to drop stuff in with these kind of epic quests and so forth, and in the end, None of that meant anything. They couldn't put it in quick. They couldn't live up to their promises. They couldn't live up to their ambitions. They bit off more than they could chew. In the end, all of that was kind of wasted effort. But as far as I see it, we're at the end of the line now, guys. What started with that blog post back in 2013, it's all complete. I think they finally got the renewable, comfortable system that they were looking for for the whole time. They've got the best of both worlds, and we get our legendaries. So that's about it. I wanted to talk about it. I wanted to keep you guys in the loop. Uh, it's definitely something I think a lot of people are brushing off and isn't getting uh, deserved attention. There have been several things in the recent months that have been very good to hear. Comments like we had on the Ask Me Anything recently where they're saying we might get a new map every Living World update. The development of old things like Basket Brawl randomly going into the game. The development of stuff like the Mac client. The frequent, much more frequent World vs. World updates and player polling. As well as all the features we're getting with updates. These have all been signs since March that Guild Wars 2 is finally finding its feet. And this next thing on top of the list that the legendaries are back is a great addition, but it really is just another thing that's, I think, given a lot of us a lot more confidence as time's going on. Another big step in the right direction, and we'll see how things go. If there's even more issues with legendaries after this, well, that would just be quite hilarious. So there you go, guys. I was wrong. I'm very curious about what you have to say. I think ArenaNet did a solid here. I think it warranted some discussion, but let me know. Are you still salty about this? Is it still not enough for you? And if so, I want to hear why not. How do you feel about how long they worked on that system before having to drop it completely? Was it incompetence or was it just the way that things go in game development sometimes? I'm very glad that this is a video I get to make as opposed to the ranty one I did back in March. And I think as many people as possible should know that this big controversy has actually come to a conclusion and should be as newsworthy as the original controversy was, even though there's so little discussion on the damn thing. So cheers guys, hope you enjoyed the video, thanks very much for watching, I'll be down there in the comments, and until next time, have a good evening. because this would earn them profit. So this quote inspired a lot of discussion in the community because it was kind of one of these things of, oh, 